politically incorrect. Actress, Lisa Kudrow. Actor, Mark Hamill. Journalist, Jeff Greenfield. And radio host, Roger Hedgecock. And now, the star of politically incorrect, Well, did you see Star Wars? I tell you, it went back. A, a, a reopening 20 years ago, and it's still like uh, the b second biggest opening ever. And we have Mark Hamill here today. So very exciting. And even, uh, even the administration picked up on it. Al Gore said, the force is with us. He was talking about the economy. I love that when the administration... <laughs> When they do that, the force is with us. I, I think it's uh, not surprising that the administration, though, is, is thinking about uh, Star Wars, because with the campaign finance scandals they have, they can really identify with the concept of being released after 20 years. <laughs> yeah, Al Gore said, you know, with the American economy the way it is, the, the force is with us. I, I love that when they pick up on those cultural things like that. Many admitted that R2 T2 is his father. <laughs> And he uh, compared Newt Gingrich to Uranus, which I think was... <laughs> yes, they are in trouble over there, the Clinton administration. Uh, a senior official, very high up, a guy said that it was, a, he said, quote, a huge mistake to give the kind of access they did to foreigners uh, in the White House. He said, for one thing, the Lincoln bedroom uh, still smells like curry, which is <laughs> a huge mistake. Huge, huge mistake to do that joke is what it was. But, uh, Clinton also met with the governors. You know, they're all in Washington. They all have their pet programs that they want to get across, Medicaid and welfare reform. Pete Wilson, of course, still with the immigrants. Uh, but uh, Clinton took him aside and explained to him how to make money off foreigners, which is uh, a better way to go. And, and uh, the, in news from England, uh, apparently Prince Charles is never going to marry Camilla Parker Bowles, his girlfriend. That's what they say. They'll never marry, never have children. And uh, wait, uh, geneticists are saying that this is the best news since <laughs> the polio vaccine. Anyway, thank you for coming. It's all been satirized for your protection. San Diego, he hosts the community forum on News Talk Radio, Roger Hedgecock, right over here. Mayor, thank you for coming back. He is, of course, a political and media analyst for ABC. His latest novel, The People's Choice, now available in paperback form, our friend Jeff Greenfield. Good to see you, my friend. Hold it up to the host. Thank you. His graphic novel is called Black Pearl, and his film Star Wars, or something like that, made $36 million this weekend. Mark Hamill. Nice to meet you. Congratulations. And uh, you all know this lady. She has been nominated for an Emmy, a Golden Globe, and an American Comedy Award for her role as Phoebe on NBC's Friends, Lisa Kudrow. Sit back and I'll entertain you here for a second. Well, it's time once again to bestow our time-honored Prince Rogers Nelson Get Over Yourself Award, which we confer upon those persons or groups most in need of getting over themselves. Tonight's recipient is a World War II villain, a group whose name alone conjures up visions of pure evil. Of course, I'm talking about the Swiss. <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard the dirt lately about how they were the bankers for the Third Reich, and believe me, the Goebbels estate has the free calendars to prove it. <laughs> it's true. Swiss banks were the place of deposit for all the dough that rolled in while Hitler looted Europe. Hitler. Looted Europe. Hitler, remember him? <laughs> oh, yes, if you think Hitler is just a mass murderer, think again. World War II was also a stick-up. 
But like today's Miami banker who takes a million dollar deposit in small crumpled up bills and pretends it's from a dry cleaning business, <laughs> so the Swiss looked the other way when dirtier money yodeled its way into their accounts. <laughs> Even our own Senator Alphonse D'Amato says that Swiss bankers are guilty of 50 years of deception. And when Al D'Amato calls you a weasel, well... <laughs> I'll admit, I've had it out for these Swiss bastards ever since I spent a summer over there in 1978. Trust me, the Swiss are the kind of people who would turn you into the police for dropping a gum wrapper on a train. And then they'd throw you into the slammer for a weekend to be terrorized by a fat French homosexual named Jobert. <laughs> Not that that happened to anyone in particular. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the Swiss are a cheesy people and... They certainly don't deserve the cuddly cuckoo clock image they have. Yeah, the Swiss are cool because they're the neutral country, man. Never gone to war. Well, let's examine the chief reason why that is. Money! <laughs> Switzerland never gets attacked because everybody's money is there. They just hit on a very clever scam to stay out of the line of fire. Be the guy in the poker game who's holding the money. He never gets shot. Armies will kill civilians, bomb orphanages, strafe refugee columns, but no one bombs money. And so for capitalizing on this most cynical truth of all, for collaborating with history's vilest villains, and for Slim Whitman. Switzerland, get over yourself! <laughs> Glad I got that off my chest. Really. Hope you feel better. <laughs> Anyone want to defend Switzerland? Not after that. <laughs> make the trains run on time but maybe that's part of exactly. why they exactly yeah. well but i think you've been a little unfair actually singling out switzerland i have that same feeling about most european countries like uh, well basically uh the european countries are the western european countries are pretty skilled at craven collapse to totalitarians the french yep whose reaction to uh hitler was uh would Please. you like the red or the white wine right <laughs> uh, but, you know they, i mean outside of denmark and you know our own record in terms of saving folks from what Hitler was up to is not the best. So outside of Denmark, we're not looking at a pretty, at a, at a great record. A, a lot of these images that the European countries have, and I, you must have traveled in Europe, all mm -hmm. of you, right? Yeah. I mean, I think like the Swiss, I don't think they're really true. I mean, uh, one example, why, why did the Polish get the reputation of being dumb? I don't know them. The... When, I was no, in, I mean, when I was in England, I heard the exact same jokes that we heard uh, with the fill in the word Polak about the Irish and that shocked me in our house we had to say why did the moron do this how many morons does it take we couldn't pick a uh, a group but what surprised me is was in England I heard the very same jokes except it was the Irish so I guess there's always who uh, are drunk <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding I'm but that's their reputation. Some things are true, though. I mean, you've got that, si that situation. These things are myths, but they're built on what? Experience people have so in you're daily saying life. Polish, Polish people are dumb and Irish are dumb? No, well, the ones that came to America. I think, it's, I think it's because the Russians got here first and started all the Polak jokes. The Russians got here first? Yeah, the Russian immigrants came over and just started making fun of the Poles. Oh, no. That they knew from back home. So they get, <laughs> they get dibs on the pejorative humor. It's a good theory, though. You know, it's possible. And also, you're not, you know, since we all know that the Jews run the comedy business, they're not going to write jokes about how stupid they are. Right? <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> yes. Well, all right, Marlon Brando. What about the English? No, how come the English conquered half the world, but they can't figure out central heating, dentistry, or how to cook? <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I mean, seriously, what is, what is up with that? That's why they conquered half the world. They, who wanted to stay home? They, I mean, these people boil toast. I mean, I don't They're still think... mad at us. Now, my, my eldest son was born in England, and in the, uh, in the bicentennial, in, in 1976, we were in England, so we missed the big whoop de doo over here. And I always got the attitude, and it's generalizing, of course, that they had the feeling that we were sort of wayward children who were... Uh, just needed to learn that they were right all along. I mean, they didn't call it Independence Day. The July 4th holiday to them was Good Riddance Day. <laughs> I was really surprised, right. you know, because, uh, you know, everybody loves their own country the best, but I still think that... Not the French. No. <laughs> Isn't your husband French? Yeah. He hates it there. Oh, no. What? Well, in case someone hears, it'll be bad for him. 
<laughs> do they get this program in France? Why does he hate it there? He hates Parisian people, mostly. They're judgmental and over very superficial things, and, and they're ridiculous. And their reputation... <laughs> and but their the reputation for food is preposterous, too, because who couldn't make food taste good if you smothered it in butter? I could eat a snail. <laughs> it's true. Right? But not only that, but the, the French people that I've met, you can take them to the worst restaurant, and if the presentation is nice, they say, but it's delicious. You know, it's like the best thing they've ever eaten. They're not really that discriminating. I don't think Princess Di is bulimic. I just don't think she can get down the food any better than anybody else <laughs> over there. Anyway, we're a little over time. We have to take a break. And we'll be if you're planning to be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. Well, Mark just said to me in the break, I, I like this show because it's the one show where, you know, people don't promote their movies. But I, I was saying the only time I really want to talk about a movie that's out is when it's a phenomenon. We talked about Wedding to Exhale. We talked about First Wives Club, Hits a Nerve. I have to ask, why is Star Wars, after 20 years, still this phenomenon? Do well, people don't ask that question if they re-release a, a Disney classic. But Peter they don't Pan make this kind whatever. of money. They don't have this kind of thing. Well, I don't know that they don't. I, I think that uh, it's because it's it's a fairy tale and fairy tales are timeless. It's as simple as that. It's it, People mistake the special effects and the trappings of space travel and think, ooh, it's science fiction. But right. it's really not. It's got a princess. Yeah, it's got a right. pirate. It's got a farm boy. It's got a wizard. And it makes people feel good about themselves because it's got a kind of an innocent take on doing the right thing uh, in a selfless way. Yeah. I mean... Okay, that answers that. And it's got... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, 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 you mentioned Al Gore talking about the forces yeah. with the economy, and I remember the only other time politics intruded on us, and it made me really mad, because I didn't really care about all the lawsuits flying about, because when it, you know, with great success, of course, come, come lawsuits. But uh, <laughs> when the Reagan administration appropriated our name for that... Yes that right. I, I was so mad when George lost that case I said well you know what let's start calling our movies the strategic defense initiative trilogy <laughs> and, you know like he right. said, that's a bad idea yeah. oh, it's a good idea oh, it's a good idea all right all of us will call it that so what were you going to no I was you're, just wondering if there was ever any like jealousy among the actors in Yoda <laughs> Well, mo mostly porn. because the robots and Yoda don't age. I mean, I'm just stealing myself for the time when a kid on the street asked me if I'm Luke's father. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But we know who that is, right? <laughs> 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 what did we do? Did we find that out? Well, you know, my son, my son is closer in Luke, to Luke's age than I am now. So wow. when I went to the movie for the first time in 20 years, I hadn't seen it. And for some reason, I was very moved because it seemed to me as though that were him, not me. Wow. And that's also a great way to not take responsibility for your performance. You know, your Reagan, <laughs> <laughs> your Reagan comment, though, is interesting because I think that movie coming out in the late 70s like that, with the morality play, the good versus evil and all of that, I think that laid the cultural groundwork for Reagan being elected in 1980 with this uh, evil oh, empire. Our fault. Sure. <laughs> wait a big second. Big government, wait a minute, big government was the big galactic uh, war machine and all that stuff. That was, that was pretty symbolic stuff. And so it's our fault now. Yes, it is. <laughs> See, with, I don't know, with some of these guys running for office today, I would think the exorcist would be a much better example of laying <laughs> cultural groundwork, that's, frankly. That's the difference between 1980 uh, and 1996. That's an interesting so. theory. So Reagan is, and you, the evil empire, there was an evil empire, Sure there right? was. And Reagan was always a sheriff who rode into town. Absolutely. This, I've heard this is like a space western. I've never seen this film, but um, I hear oh, it's... Oh, you're the one. I hear it's terrific. Um, <laughs> that, Cindy, do you think there's something to no, that? No, but what I think Mark's absolutely right about is that, that every so often a movie comes out and it, it hits, it hits into the cultural bloodstream Sometimes they're very well done, and sometimes, you will forgive me, like with Independence Day, uh, clearly the aliens bombed the writer's shack first because the movie absolutely <laughs> makes no sense. But it, you know, just, right, I'll take my power book and communicate with an alien galaxy's computer. Yeah, right. That's right. right. <laughs> but, but 
Now, the only other thing I would say, Roger, some of, sometimes people like me make a little too much of this. Like the fact that the audience cheered when they blew up the White House right. was supposed to prove that people were conservative. I think that's pushing it yes. a little bit. And that, that's like English majors with not enough to do with their time. Right. Okay. But this movie did. It, it, it did it in the 70s, and it'll probably do it 50 years from now. If you're still around and collect the, the residuals, God bless you. I was going to ask him that question. You know, $38 million, how much of it is trickling down to Luke Skywalker? <laughs> Well, can you lend me a couple dollars to pay for Tuesday? <laughs> okay. That's we, the answer to that. We got to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay. Now, you, uh, you mentioned that with success comes lawsuits. Well, there's a, a doozy that a lot of people are paying attention to, especially people who have a, a lot of success, and that is the case of uh, uh, Gary Wentz and his wife, Lorna. And he's a big uh, mucky muck at General Electric, and he's worth 100 million bucks, and he's getting divorced, and he offered her 10 million, and she said no, and she says she wants half, and she, this is not a community property state. So usually when the money is this big, they don't even, they get nowhere near half. But she says, Gary wanted to buy out my partnership, and I didn't want to be bought out. She said, it's like a hostile takeover. He offered me a very small percentage, and I said, that's not the price of the buyout. <laughs> and uh, the question is... Who says true love is dead? Yeah, You know, right. you can write poetry like that. That's a Valentine's Day card. Well, she is. said, is it an equal partnership, or is a housewife a junior partner? Which is what it comes down to. And she was a good one. I mean, she didn't just shop. This woman made a, a home while he did all his work. So, that's the question. <laughs> Listen, I think we can hear all of our lawyers' VCRs clicking on all over town. In California, in a lot of states, this is, this is an issue that's already over. You get 50-50 no matter which way. Yeah, and the, but that's just not such a state. And then, but the controversy now is that women sometimes are making more money than the guy. And so but that's a lot not of this squealing. case, Roger. The case here is... <laughs> This guy went to work and did his job and made, he, they started out with like $2,500. She helped put him through where graduate school or whatever, and he turned it into $100 million, but she was at home doing her thing, and she's saying, I should get half. You think so? Yeah, she should get half. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends, it depends on the relationship. You know, if she was always really mad that he was away working all the time, that she wasn't that supportive in the money-making effort. Well... I may, might be being too logical about it, but I don't... I, I hate the whole alimony thing, that you try to just decide how much a human being is worth after, like, ten years of a relationship. It, that's just so weird. It seems like if you want... If you cared at any time about the person you spent, you know, your married, married life with, you want them to be able to exist in the lifestyle that you both became accustomed to, as close as you can. Well, that's what they usually do. They give just enough money to, uh, which to the 10 million probably would have done it. You probably <laughs> could live on that. But she's saying, no, I, wa I was there from the beginning and I want half. She's going to, what she's going to do, this is probably what is called, having a law degree I blessedly never had to use. This and you're divorced too, right? Yes. Uh, so, so what I do you think? A, yes. Uh, believe it or not, I think if she can prove, and that's what's going to come down to, in an equitable distribution, if she can sit there and prove, you know, Three nights a week, the dinner parties. And, oh, she was and, a great. And, she right. did. Well, then, then what's going to happen here is the judge is going to use some. No, but what do scale. you think? I what? think she should. She should get she as should much get as she. Who knows half? I don't know the facts. I mean, you well, know, the testosterone in me says not half. Right. <laughs> Obviously. That's what I but, wanted to know there. But the more nurturing side of me. Yeah. The the feminine. The junior. The junior side. Of you. Can you find says, it? Yes, uh, around somewhere. <laughs> All right. um, uh, says. Ten may not be enough. I mean, if you know, they're going to actually sit down, and this this is what one of the many things that makes law the lunatic profession it is. They're going to sit down and try to measure this. A judge is going to sit down and say, "Well, what did she do? All right, you know, if, if he did all the big corporate breakthroughs, maybe twenty percent." But it's, there's no reason to think that just because she wasn't at, you know, GE developing you know, right. the the new light bulb, that she I didn't. He, she didn't earn a heck of a lot of what he did. Are there kids involved in this case? Uh, that they don't say. Because I always think of it as like checks and balances, and to me, the money aspect of it does keep you in line to a certain extent, but to me, the idea of somebody else raising my kids 
you know, it always right. gives you the impetus to try and work things out. I mean, because once you have the kids, that's a real investment of your life. But and also, these big corporate types, have you ever seen them when they're going through a divorce or something? <laughs> they're, they're nothing. They're jello. They become <laughs> miasma. They're just, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I think she should get as much as she can. Yeah, what do you want? Dennis Rodman, I mean. <laughs> okay. All right, we've settled it again. We'll be right back. Dick Morris, hey, Michael Moore, Kate Mulgrew, and Lisa Schiffer. Now watch a special Politically Incorrect State of the Union edition live on the East Coast at 10.30 and on the West Coast at 9.30 after home improvement. Then join us again for a brand new show at our regular time, unless you're in Guam. No, I'm kidding. That's... <laughs>